31 Things That Surprise Visitors to the United States of America. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, entertaining. This video is a live stream. If you're on the live stream, I'm looking forward to what you think about these things. And if you visited the U.S., what surprised you? Uh, and if you're watching the archive, we'll make sure to subscribe, click the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss one of these live streams. And as usual, I'll do Q&A if you've got questions at the end of this video. So the 31 things things I'll be running down uh, here are normal American customs and habits that visitors from the rest of the world find unusual. The USA has 50 states, 321 million people across nine time zones with 16,000 McDonald's restaurants. There you go. And even though the USA is large, it's quite diverse, there are definitely some things you will find that are typically American. So let's start with number one. The first thing that visitors often say about coming to the U.S. is that uh, Americans are often overly friendly. So at a store or restaurant, you might be greeted with a, not just a hello, but a how are you or how's it going? Sometimes people find the chit chat to be a little overly personal, but how are you and how's it going uh, in the U.S. kind of serve as greetings, almost like hello. At the cash register, you might even get asked uh, what you're doing later today or what you're doing for the weekend. And if there's nobody behind you in line, well, you might be treated like you are their long lost friend. You're really not their long lost friend and they're really not trying to pry. That's just the small talk that we make here in the U.S. You'll find this more in the small towns rather than the big cities. Uh, you'll find it particularly in Hawaii. It is the aloha uh, spirit, after all, in Hawaii. Uh, you know what? And yes, everybody does have their story about the uh, rude New Yorker that they've met, uh, and you are sure to meet that stereotype in New York. But overall, uh, visitors to the U.S. find Americans to be friendly, sometimes a little bit too friendly. Uh, the second thing that visitors find surprising when they come to the USA uh, is that that friendliness they've heard about really doesn't extend to the airport. Uh, in particular, when they come through Customs and Border Patrol, uh, unfortunately, everybody is kind of treated as a terrorist on arrival into the U.S. I think it stems from 9-11 uh, and a little bit of the police state in the airports that have been set up. You know, Customs and Border Patrol agents are often described by visitors as uh, scowling, gruff, and rude. And a lot of the security checks that we do, right? They're really, they're really security theater. They are designed to make people feel more secure, perhaps uh, without actually being more secure. Um, the third thing that surprises visitors to the U.S. are smiles, uh, and in particular, that Americans often smile at complete strangers. So you might be walking down the street, even in New York City, and people will look at you and they'll smile at you. And you might think, does this person know me? Why are they smiling at me? Gosh, that's weird. Uh, and it's it's actually, it's really just an American thing to smile a lot and to smile at strangers. And actually, uh, The Atlantic has a whole article about American smiles uh, here. Da, 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 da. Why Americans smile so much. Look at that smile right there. You know, we're taught from an early age in the U.S. So when you take a picture, say cheese, cheese. Like Americans can put on that smile just like that. Uh, and uh, in this uh, article in The Atlantic, uh, they quoted a user uh, on Reddit from Finland who said, when a stranger on the street smiles at you, you assume A, he's drunk, B, he's insane, or C, he's American. So uh, when you come here, get used to people smiling at you on the street. Uh, number four, fourth thing that surprised visitors coming to the U.S. is American pride. Uh, you will see American flags flying many places. You'll see them uh, flying in schools. You'll see them flying on rooftops of tall buildings. Here, you'll see it uh, on a house. This was around the 4th of July, which is uh, Independence Day in the USA. Uh, this house was all decked out, as you could see, for that holiday. Uh, you'll find people wearing red, white, and blue attire. Perhaps I'm not wearing a yellow shirt today because I figured this was appropriate for the topic of this live stream. Even Topher back here, he's got his uh, patriotic hat on. And uh, you'll see lots of patriotic parades for lots of holidays as well. American pride is displayed quite often. Um, number 
five, fitness is a way of life. Uh, and by the way, I could zoom in on these photos now. So this was a shot I actually took in uh, Santa Monica. Lots of people doing their outdoor yoga, working on these outdoor workout gear. This is near where Arnold Schwarzenegger got his start in Muscle Beach. Uh, but you'll see people wearing their yoga pants everywhere, wearing their things. They look like they're just ready to break out into a run almost any time. There's gyms on every street corner. Uh, you'll see people jogging, biking everywhere. Even in tiny little towns, you will find uh, gyms and probably a tanning salon. Uh, and if you really want to fit in, make sure you carry a bottle of water wherever you go. And that bottle of water should be in some fancy reusable container, perhaps by Swell or a glass container. Uh, and by the way, speaking of fitness, you know, what's my fitness thing of choice? I like to go to the beach. Uh, I like to surf. I like to boogie board. Uh, I like to ride a bicycle. But many of you know I also like to play Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, and I've been talking about that a lot. And maybe not all of you have found that video. So I want to show you about 20 seconds of my fitness way of life playing Dance Dance Revolution. And then we'll get back to the sixth thing that surprises visitors to the U.S. It might surprise visitors to the U.S. that, that I play Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, but, uh, but I sure do. And that volume could probably be louder, couldn't it? Hey, but uh, this was actually featured on uh, Japanese TV. I did a Japanese TV show about Round 1, uh, which is a Japanese arcade that has a lot of locations in the U.S. Uh, and, of course, Dance Dance Revolution is something that uh, is pretty popular there. All right. So uh, let me go take a few comments. Uh, and uh, OC Girl says, is that uh, Columbus back there making a cameo to promote his channel? It sure is. Columbus is right here. And if you haven't checked it out, our, our his channel uh, is called The Office Survival Guide, where you we give you the tips not just to survive the office week, but to crush it. And we were just recording uh, last night a video about uh, how to uh, crush it when you give virtual presentations and how virtual virtual presentations are different, so stay tuned for that uh, in the next uh, few coming weeks. He, his spot is right there. Uh, Brandon says those Dance Dance Revolution skills are amazing. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, Kay Clark says it's funny. Carlos appreciates the skills. Emmett says crazy legs. I've been playing Dance Dance Revolution for a long time, as you can probably see. Uh, related to patriotism, Annie says you've got to love Texas and their patriotism. Miss it. Uh, for sure, Texas. They are very patriotic in Texas. Uh, and Carlos says uh, he likes Tover's hat there in the back. Yeah, we've actually got a a lot of hats for Topher for different seasons, and we picked up on uh, different travels. Um, and Kathy says, uh, everyone is patriotic about their own country. I think actually many people, the, what they're surprised about in the U.S. is just how many flags they see flying, just how patriotic it is. I think the U.S. is actually uh, more patriotic than... Um, than a lot of countries. Australian's pretty uh, patriotic, too. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, Gravel says, I look like I'm ready for the 4th of July. 4th of July, Independence Day, where we shoot off fireworks and things like that. So I probably am. I just I just need some, uh, I just need some fireworks, and then we'll be all good. Uh, and uh, Emmett says, hi, OC Girl. Good work back there. Uh, yes, good work to OC Girl. And Emmett, thanks for saying hi. EJ says, check your emails. I sent you some info on new hotels openings. I saw it, EJ. Uh, thank you very much. Or Kai, depending upon which one of you is watching. Or perhaps both of you. Um, all right, so let's go on to da, 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 number... Six. Okay, the sixth thing that surprised visitors to the U.S. is just how big the United States of America is. Uh, and I show you this picture because this is Italy superimposed on the USA. So if you thought Italy was big, well, the United States of America is really quite huge. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I'm going to Las Vegas. Maybe I can take a day trip to the Grand Canyon. Yet yeah, you should stay in a different hotel. Uh, places are so far apart uh, that you really need to factor in a lot of transportation time between different attractions because the U.S. is really quite big. Uh, and if you're curious how long it takes to drive, say, from uh, California, California over here in one corner to the east coast. I've done that drive at a sane amount, which is like 
eight to ten hours of driving a day uh it'll take five days to go from the uh, west coast to the east coast or you could do it the other way east coast to west coast it's actually a pretty interesting drive if you've got a lot of time for your vacation uh kind of popular things to do uh are as the coastal drive which is basically like along california um, particularly starting either in san diego or san francisco and then kind of working your way up the california coast all right. The seventh thing that surprised visitors to the USA are uh, prices displayed without tax. This annoys a lot of people. Frankly, it annoys us who live here too. Uh, this is a price tag at Costco. Uh, it tells you that these solar lights are $19.99, but there's going to be some tax added on. How much tax is going to be added on? really hard to tell uh, and there would be no sign or no way for you in the store to actually know what the tax rate is because the tax rates the sales tax rate depends upon the state the county and the city that you're in and then sometimes the type of merchandise whether it's like grocery items like milk or eggs or uh, goods or electronics and so there could be different tax rates for those the nominal tax rate um, in like California is 7.75 uh, percent. That's a real round number. Uh, rolls off the tongue. Washington D.C. it's 10 percent. Virginia it's 5 percent. Uh, you go to the state of Oregon. There is no sales tax in the state of Oregon. So uh, prices very widely. So it's hard to really know how much it's going to cost. Get your change ready and things like that. The uh, eighth thing uh, that surprises visitors coming to the USA is just how much tipping goes on in the USA. And by tipping, I don't mean cow tipping or tipping over things. By tipping, I mean uh, giving people small amounts of money for their services. It seems like we tip for everything here in the USA, uh, but the big things, we tip uh, 15%. If you're having a good meal, uh, 20% perhaps, if it's a really good meal, at like full service restaurants. You get a coffee, you might leave a dollar in their little jar. If you want to know more about tipping, I've got a whole video about tipping. Uh, you can check that out on my channel. Just search for Yellow Productions, how to tip. Uh, how to tip in the USA is what that's called. That was actually requested uh, by someone uh, from down under in Australia who said, Chris, I'm going to the US. I'm really confused about how to tip. How do I do that? That's uh, like a 20 minute discussion all of its own about all the places, how you might want to tip, how much. Mm. And uh, yeah, so related to taxes, James says New Zealand has one tax rate of 17.5% across the country. That is a really high tax rate. So maybe I'll put up with the fact that I don't know what the taxes are for it to be uh, half the price. Uh, and Kathy says, yeah, as an Aussie, we are not used to tipping. can be very confusing to know how much to tip. It's confusing to those of us that live here as well. Uh, so it's not just you. Uh, John wants to know, Chris, how far is the travel from the Las Vegas Strip to the Grand Canyon? It's about four hours, five hours driving to get to the, the actual um, national park part of the Grand Canyon. There's like another part of the Grand Canyon that's owned by an Indian tribe that's two hours away. That's the one that has like the glass walkout on, but that's about all you do there. Like if you only have a day trip, you could check that out just to see the Grand Canyon. But if you want to go to the main national park, uh, that's not a day trip from Vegas. That's something you should at least plan a night in there. Carlos asked what I'm drinking today. Uh, I'm, I'm finishing the straight tea uh, that I was drinking on a previous live stream. I probably should have had something more American like, I don't know, lemonade. Uh, but this, this, this was in the fridge. It's like a British iced tea that's uh, Japanese made. I like these... Uh, drinks uh from the japanese supermarkets uh casper uh says i should go to memphis if i've never been there i have been to memphis and i've had some uh really good ribs in memphis i wasn't there for a long time i was just uh driving through yeah and jeff says uh he lives in vegas everything is tipped absolutely almost every service you get in vegas uh the people you know are holding their hand out because they're they're waiting for you to to put some of that money in it right there all right, let's go on to the next number. Um, number nine, the ninth thing that surprised visitors to the USA are resort fees. So many of our hotels add resort fees. Uh, 
it's just an extra fee. Sometimes people call it a resort tax. It's not a tax. It's a fee. Uh, this fee is supposed to cover resort-like amenities like pools, gyms, Wi-Fi. It's really just a hidden fee to increase the room rate but make the room rate seem lower on the travel search engines. Um, sometimes the resort fee can be in excess of the room rate itself. Uh, a $45 resort fee on a $20 night room in Las Vegas is typical. Uh, if you want to see more about resort fees, uh, I've got a whole video about resort fees. That's the thumbnail from it. You could check out um, Yellow Productions resort fees. The 10th thing that surprised visitors to the U.S. is um, it's actually it's not that tourist friendly. Now that might be strange because you say, Chris, there's so many tourists that come to the U.S. and maybe it is tourist friendly. And I, not compared to um, like Japan, even not compared to Switzerland or other European countries where they have like a lot of good tourist information infrastructure. Here I put up the picture of the visitor information center being closed. Uh, if you want to find a place to like get maps and get information about where to go, it's going to be hard to come by as a public amenity. In the U.S., we don't do a lot of maps on the street. We don't do a lot of tourist information. The best tourist information you're going to get probably from Yellow Productions before you go, uh, barring that your hotel concierge, uh, but don't expect to find out a lot as you're going around uh, the various cities. The 11th thing that surprised visitors to the U.S. is uh, there's lots of homeless in big cities in the U.S., uh, particularly the likes of Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, even Hawaii uh, has a surprising homeless population that people don't um, really think, and then they get to Hawaii, and they're like, I didn't expect this island paradise to have uh, so many homeless people. But in fact, it's a really big issue. Uh, this is a picture here from uh, Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles. You might have seen my video on new downtown Los Angeles, and um, there's basically this section of downtown LA that is set up where it's legal to camp out on the street from it's like 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. until the morning, uh, and so that area, uh, it's just full of tents and garbage, and it's really, really not fantastic. So it's one of those things for, like, the people who live in these cities, they kind of know where those are, and they'll say, hey, that's a place to avoid, uh, but it's a place as a visitor you might not know, and so you might want to find those places and just mark them, mark them off their map. Um... Carlos asked if I've been to national parks before. I've been to uh, – my favorite national park is uh, Zion National Park, um, a great one in uh, San Diego. is the Cabrillo National Monument. It's really tiny. Uh, Patrick points out not just L.A., San Francisco is bad. San Francisco is bad. Uh, Emma agrees. He says, I'm in downtown Seattle. Rough sight sometimes for sure. Um, traveling the world says it's bad in many cities over the world. Uh, and Gravel says, I hate that Skid Row is turning into a tourist attraction. That's weird. I don't know. I don't know why, uh, why anybody would want to go there as a tourist attraction. Um, okay. Let's go on to the next number. Uh, number... 12, the 12th thing that surprised visitors to the U.S. is uh, just the amount of freeway driving that we do. Expect to do a lot of driving on uh, the freeway. And uh, often people think, well, I don't get on the, the highway or the freeway or the interstate. By the way, it's called all those things. It's called the freeway, the highway, the interstate. Sometimes in places like in California, you just refer to it by the number, like the 5, the 405. That's what we call it. We don't even say freeway or highway. It's something that everybody goes on. Uh, and so we'll take the freeway for 10-minute trips. Uh, we'll take the freeway for 5-minute trips just to go one exit. And a lot of places around the world, you don't get on the freeway or the highway unless you're going along long way um but here that's just it's it's ev it's everyday driving and uh in some parts of the usa you should also know that there's some etiquette that the leftmost lane is the passing lane meaning that you only drive in that if you're passing people um in a lot of places and in this picture like in california it's become the uh what they call the hov or high occupancy vehicle lane sometimes known as a carpool lane if you have like a lot of people in your car it's also the unofficial fast lane. So if you're in California and it's not rush hour like this, you're probably going 10 miles an hour. But if it's not this time uh, and you're in the carpool lane, you should be driving uh, faster than anybody else on the road. Otherwise, people will be tailgating you and honking at you. Uh, but 
The 13th thing that surprised people is uh, just how distracted the drivers are. Uh, so driving in the USA, like it's generally safe. Drivers are generally polite. Yeah, sure, there's some road rage. There's road rage everywhere. Um, but the levels of alertness are quite low. Uh, most drivers are on internal autopilot. Uh, they're not paying attention to their surroundings because maybe they're like this guy in there and they're shaving as they're driving. Or they've got their Starbucks coffee that they're drinking um, and, and they're not they're not really paying close attention. And so a lot of people think when they're driving on the freeways, they're like, I don't, well, I don't know why these people don't let me in. It's probably because they're not actually not trying to let you in. It's probably because uh, they just they just aren't paying attention. They frankly just don't see you there. And I'll say my rule of thumb driving on the freeway in the U.S. is basically to pretend I'm invisible and that nobody can see me. And uh, hey, I think if you have that perspective, then uh, you'll be good to go. You know. But related to places where people pay attention, like I've driven in a lot of places, uh, including the south of Italy, which is pretty crazy. Probably not as crazy as India or Bangkok or some of those places, but the south of Italy is pretty crazy, uh, and you have to pay attention because uh, if you if you take your eyes off the road for like at, uh, you're done. Uh, but it's pretty orderly in the US and so that's what allows people to be a little bit uh, distracted. Um, um, let's see, uh, da, da, da. Uh, Christine says, yeah, the worst rush hour traffic in the US is in Hawaii. The H1 or H3 at rush hour, a 25 minute trip turns into one and a half to three hours. Yeah, sometimes people are also surprised about the traffic and how bad it is in big cities, in Hawaii in particular, because you wouldn't think of a tropical paradise as being a place that has really bad traffic, uh, but sure is. Uh, and uh, Casper says, never go to Chicago, the driver's only rage. All right, uh, thank you for that tip. Um, and Annie says, uh, texting and driving is so awful. Uh, yeah, that is a problem uh, that we do have here. Uh, and Kathy says, I used to do uh, my makeup in the car on the way to work. Uh, yeah, I guess if you're in a stoplight or something like that, that, that works out. Um, okay. Let's go on to the next uh, next item. So this is number 14. The 14 thing that surprised visitors coming to the U.S., uh, is many places in the U.S., particularly the big cities, are valet parking only. You'll very well, maybe in downtown Los Angeles, downtown New York City, Chicago, these sorts of things, and you'll find restaurants and hotels that only have valet parking. And you're likely going to pay for the privilege of valet parking. And because you're paying, you might think that they'll they'll be quick and prompt to get your car back and they'll try to rush not really you will likely be waiting for 15 to 20 minutes to get your car back i i hate it and i actually hotels that only have valet parking in my tofer scale they they go down tofers i i like the self park option because uh, i know it doesn't take me 20 minutes to go get my car from the self park garage 15th thing that surprised visitors coming to the u.s uh is that if you're using your credit card at a gas station you need to put in your zip code at the pump in order to use your credit card at the gas station you also have to prepay for gas uh many countries around the world you can gas up and then go pay not here you have to uh, prepay either at the pump or inside. Um, the kind of pro tip there, if you are from like Canada or Australia, someplace that has a four-digit postcode, uh, you can put a zero in front of that and then the four digits of the postcode and then your international card will typically work there. Uh, another option, if that doesn't work, just try Try all nines. Uh, that's how you can get your national card to work uh, on the New York City subway machines, for example. By the way, this Chevron is the largest Chevron in the world. This is just outside Las Vegas, uh, kind of on the border of U.S. and Nevada. It's Terrible's Chevron. It's not a terrible Chevron, but that's the name of it, Terrible Chevron. It has, what does that say, 90, like 96 gas pumps, something like that. It's, a, it's an incredible gas station. The 16th thing that surprised visitors coming to the U.S. is uh, that if you're not driving someplace, it might actually be really hard to get there. Most of the U.S. is laid out for cars first and walking third, fourth, seventh, last. I, I, I don't know. There's many places that there just aren't sidewalks, and you'll find if you're a pedestrian, you just can't get from here to there. Like you could, but you have to walk on the side of the freeway or you have to walk through some tunnel that doesn't have a sidewalk. Uh, so that that can be really frustrating. Seventeenth thing that surprises visitors coming to the U.S. Uh, is public transportation. Um, 
many people who come from Europe or Asia where there's really good public transit come to the U.S. and are, and are baffled by the public transportation systems here. They are barely functional in most U.S. cities. Um, New York City, Boston, D.C., and Chicago are the exceptions that have reasonably functional systems, but they're also really not set up for tourists. They're set up for people to basically do the morning commute in and the evening commute out. Uh, and if you're doing that, then the subway trains come every, you know, two, four, six minutes. But if you're going at like two in the afternoon, then you might be waiting 15 or 20 minutes for that train, which is specifically troublesome if you have to connect someplace. Uh, the good news is light rail is kind of making a comeback, and I think most people have seen the light to say, like, we would like some public transportation. So there's more coming online in U.S. cities, but it takes a long time to build public transportation. So uh, when you come, if it's in the next few years, probably won't be that great. Now, what's worse than the inner city public transportation is number 18, is that... Uh, trains. Our train transportation, really lousy. Uh, Amtrak is the national service provider for trains. Uh, and for 99% of the U.S. population, traveling by train is, is really not a thing. They really don't do it. So they really don't care that the train service is bad. Um, the kind of exceptions for where train service is, is passable in the U.S. Um, is the Northeastern Corridor, which is like Washington, D.C. to New York City, uh, and then also in California, the Pacific Surf Liner, San Diego up to Los Angeles, and kind of into Northern California as decent service. Those are the two decent places to take the train. Everywhere else, you should drive or fly. Um, don't bother with the train. Um, Kathy says, uh, we have the light rail trams here in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Love the trams. I love the trams in Melbourne, Australia, too. I think it's really neat that the trams in Melbourne actually are free to ride in the central business district. That was actually one of my favorite parts about Melbourne. Uh, Annie said, uh, the New York subway had the freakiest people at the Times Square station, but that was my mistake for being there that late. Yeah, New York City subway late at night. Eh, hmm. Yeah, not so much. Uh, Brandon says, I wish we had the Shinkansen, which is the bullet train in Japan. I wish we had the Shinkansen too. Uh, and Evan asked if the picture uh, that I was showing right back there was the Washington, D.C. Metro. Uh, and sure enough, very good. That's a good eye. That is one of the newest trains on the Washington, D.C. Metro. Uh, okay. The 19th thing that surprised visitors to the U.S. is the confusing currency. Uh, per, the, like the bills, they all look the same. They're all green. It's hard to tell them apart. But the coins, the coins are impossible to tell the value by quickly looking at them. Sometimes people think, well, I'll look at the size, right? The bigger they get, maybe the value, not really, right? The penny, the copper one there, that's one cent. The nickel is right over here. Uh, the dime, it's a little bit smaller. That's 10 cents. And the quarter, 25 cents. And you can't really tell by nickel and dime what the value of those are. We don't really call it a 10 cent piece. Um, so the cur currency is uh, just confusing. Um, I would say, you know, credit like payments by credit cards. Almost every place in the U.S. takes credit cards. Just forget about coins and bills and uh, pay by a credit card. 20th thing that surprised visitors coming to the U.S. Uh, is being asked for identification when they buy alcohol, um, even if they're 70 years old. That's right. Uh, Australians in particular uh, find it very strange. Europeans too, because uh, those are two countries that are pretty lax uh, by looking at IDs. And um, if you get carded and you're 70 years old or you're 50 years old, they are not singling you out. Uh, they just do that for everybody. That's the policy at many bars, at many supermarkets to card everybody. I went to a liquor store once to buy a bag of ice no alcohol. And they asked my ID. And I'm like, I'm buying ice. I'm not buying anything alcoholic. And they're like, yep, yeah, but it's a liquor store. And so our policy is to just card everybody for everything. I'm like, you are ridiculous. So if you think that's ridiculous, you aren't the only one. Uh, the 21st thing the surprise visitors coming to the U.S. is air conditioning. Uh, we like our indoor spaces to be cool. Not just cool. We like it to be cold. That means lots of air conditioning, particularly in Las Vegas, which is really hot outside. Uh, if you go to like Las Vegas in the summer, you'll probably need to go outside every hour to thaw out. Um, so if you're not used to lots of air conditioning, 
you might want to carry a light jacket with you. 22nd thing that surprised people, and I saw somebody mention this in the chat, um, is uh, the public restroom toilet door gaps. Um, yeah, this is like a public restroom in the U.S., uh, and there's like a big gap on the bottom. Uh, there's like these gaps through the doors. I don't know who designs these things. I don't know who likes these things. I don't even know why they're like that. Uh, I definitely like them much better when you go to Europe and things like that where like they're all the way to the floor and you kind of get your own room. That's a lot better. These these things are weird. Worse than this is when you go to like China, you go to like Beijing and you go to the public restrooms there and they don't even have doors on them. So yeah, good times. Uh all right, so uh, now we're on to the food section, by the way. So the, all these next items are going to be about food. And uh, by the way, our wonderful bunny MacGyver had to get a cameo in here. Uh, and so this is number 23. Uh one of the things that surprise uh, visitors to the U.S. is that there's really – that's like a global cuisine here. Uh, there's You could have like really high-end good cuisine, but we, we also love chain restaurants. Um, but on the global cuisine part, you know, as different cultures have settled into various parts of the U.S., they've brought their cuisines. Like if you go to Miami and Florida, there's great Cuban, great Haitian restaurants. If you go to Washington, D.C., there's really good Salvadorian food and Ethiopian food. L.A., San Francisco, New York City – pretty much everything. But if you're in the middle of the country, like you're in the random city in Kansas, probably Pizza Hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and McDonald's are about all you are going to have there. Mm. Um, the 24th thing that surprised visitors to the U.S., this might be one of the ones I hear the most, are the huge portions, just how big the portions are. Uh, and so you should not feel the need uh, to finish what you've been served. The portions are huge. Uh, they are generally designed to be more than one person could possibly eat. Uh, this is at a barbecue restaurant. Uh, this was actually a uh, portion for three of us. It was served on a tray like this. There's so much food. Um, and so getting a to-go box is pretty standard. You take your food home, eat it later. Sometimes uh, it's also called a doggy bag. You could ask for a doggy bag. Um, now, uh, in addition to large uh, portions for the food, also we have like really large drink cups. Uh, and if you go to like McDonald's or like a burger chain and you get like the extra large drink, it'll be huge. One time I was at In-N-Out Burger, which is my favorite burger chain, and there was a group of uh, three Korean students it looked like. They looked like they were students at the nearby university, probably just got here within the last couple of weeks, made a pilgrimage to In-N-Out Burger. They ordered extra large large drink and this like 20 year old Korean girl was like she as soon as she got the drink from the cashier she was like is it is this the drink and then she went over to her friends to be like look how big this cup is I mean the extra large drink is like I mean it's, it's huge um so yeah we like the drinks and the food huge uh so the 25th thing that surprised people coming to the U.S. was uh, disposable everything, particularly a lot of hotel breakfasts. Um, this is a hotel breakfast. I forget what chain I was at. Probably a Spring Hill Suites or something like that. Uh, and paper plates, plastic cups, plastic utensils, uh, everything single use, everything's disposable. Um, and uh, you might say, gosh, why is it? Uh, like these hotels find it's it's less work for them to throw it all away uh but there is a lot of trash that's generated by that sort of a breakfast 26th thing that surprised visitors to the u.s are over attentive servers at restaurants in particular um many diners coming from europe are used to ordering and being left alone uh but in the u.s good service means your server checks up on you every 10 minutes or so to see how things are going, in particular to fill up your water glass. Now, a lot of people say, how full does my water glass have to be? How much water do I drink? If I need water, I will ask them. Well, uh, most Americans feel that if their water glass ever gets empty, the service is not really good. It should be up to the server to make sure their water glass stays pretty full all of the time. And so uh, if they're checking up on you every 10 minutes, asking you how it is, if you need anything, they're actually generally not rushing you. They're, they're doing this because they want you to think that they're giving you good service so that you give them a better tip since everything here runs on tips. 27 thing that surprised visitors to the U.S. is ice. 
We love ice here in the U.S. in everything. Uh, if you can drink it, we put ice in it. Soda, tea, whiskey, water, it's all best served with copious amounts of ice. Uh, and if you don't like that much ice, you can ask for no ice, no ice, no problem. 28th thing the surprise visitors coming to the U.S. Uh, is sometimes uh, finding American food to be too sweet or overly sweet, too much sugar, too much corn syrup. This is uh, Breakfast Republic. It's a really good breakfast restaurant here in Southern California. This is a large portion, right? Uh, this plate is um, – this plate was like was – like this big i mean it's a big plate uh and like maple syrup we love maple syrup for breakfast we love things sweet um and if you go to the south and you get and you get an iced tea it will be sickeningly sweet I, i'm sure there's many of you on the live stream right now that might be from the south and you're like chris we love it that way i'm sure you do <laughs> but a lot of people that aren't used to it are like wow that is uh so sweet um and then the cakes and things like that too. So like cupcakes, people be like, ah, that is too sweet. Uh, Annie says there is no such thing as too sweet uh, for sure. Uh, and then related to ice, yeah, like then so we'll like Christine will say the crushed ice from Quick Trip uh, is the best. Absolutely, people who love ice will be like, I love the ice from this place. A lot of people really love the ice from Sonic, which is kind of a drive-in burger chain because um, it's this. Oh, what's the what's the name they use for it? I don't know, but it's this kind of like uh, fluffy, like pellet ice or things like that. Uh, Yuritsa is not a fan of maple syrup. I am a big maple syrup fan. I bet if there's any Canadians on, uh, Canadians should love maple syrup because Canada is like the home of maple syrup. Uh, and uh, Elena says Canada loves our sweet tea. Hey, it's good to hear that you love the sweet tea in Canada too. All right. The 29th thing that surprised visitors to the U.S. is the milk Boy, you go to some place, uh, you go to like a coffee shop and, uh, you know, you get a coffee and they ask what kind of milk you want and you'll have like a thousand choices for milk. Do you want 2%? Do you want 1%? Do you want skim milk? Do you want soy milk? Do you want almond milk? Do you want oat milk? Maybe even milk from other animals like uh, goat milk. But ask for whole milk and they'll be like, ah, yeah, we don't – sorry, we don't have that. How about the non-fat stuff that tastes like water? Uh, the milk, it just – you know, the milk, like if you've had milk, if you've had milk in Japan, milk in Japan like tastes like milk, you know. Also in a lot of good European countries, it tastes like milk. Here, the milk, not not so flavorful. Um, the uh, 30th thing that surprised visitors to the U.S., uh, particularly visitors from Europe, is the cheese. Uh, thinking that uh, cheese in the U.S. all seems to be the same. You go to like a sandwich place. If you get an option for cheese, your options for cheese will generally be the same options everywhere you go. American cheese, Swiss cheese, cheddar cheese, mozzarella cheese, provolone, and pepper jack cheese. And that all tastes Fairly similar, um, but uh, but the one that surprises people the most is our squirtable cheese in a can. That's right, easy cheese. Uh, it's particularly popular on Philly cheese steaks. Uh, if you're going to Philadelphia and you want to get an authentic cheese steak with the liquid cheese, ask for it with whiz. Uh, we often refer to it as cheese whiz. Uh, you get that liquid cheese. You get that spray cheese on it. And the 31st thing the surprise visitors to the U.S. are the huge stores. Uh, American supermarkets are, uh, in my opinion, a thing of beauty. Uh, Costco, Whole Foods, these gigantic places you want bread. Stroll down the bread aisle. That's like a mile long. Your choices for bread are going to be quite impressive. Do you want strawberry jam? There might be 10 or 20 different brands of strawberry jam in supermarkets, so uh, you will find a lot of uh, different selections of that. Uh, and that's certainly one of the things, uh, like when I travel um, to Europe in particular, I'll be like, oh, these supermarkets are – they're really small, and they don't have much. Where, where did all this go? I guess that comes from the U.S. being that big country. We can have a lot of land for all those selections. But you know, one of the biggest American chains that people love is Costco, uh, and Costco – Actually, it doesn't have that much selection, but the stores are huge and amazing. Uh, all right. Well, now it is question and answer time. So if you have uh, a question that I didn't answer, uh, 
we'll go ahead and ask it again. Put a question mark at the end to make sure uh, that I know it's a question. And if there were some things that surprise you uh, that I didn't get to or I didn't say in my uh, 31 items, well, let me know uh, what surprised you when you come to the U.S. Uh, Daphne says, I watched some vloggers from the U.K., and when they visit the U.S., they love Target. It's so shocking. I, I love Target, too. Target is a great store. Uh, Kathy says, uh, I love our Costco here in Australia. Uh, fantastic. I've not been to the Costco in Australia, but uh, I need to, I'd like to visit. I love to visit uh, Costco's around the world. I loved going to Costco in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, and seeing they had these huge packages of cow tongue, uh, lengua. They love it for like tacos and things like that. Uh, Sir says, is there any sales tax in Vegas? There is sales tax in Vegas. I don't know the number off the top of my head. Um, uh, Anoy says, I like feta cheese that you can get in salad. Uh, that is a popular cheese selection in the U.S. in salad. It's one of the ones that tastes different. Uh, with a long name, Weeby Wham says, Hi, Chris. I'm watching live from Scotland. Have you ever been to Scotland? I've never been to Scotland. I've been to Ireland. I've never been to Scotland. We want to go to Scotland. We never get to go because um, it's often – just often too expensive we want to go in the summer it seems like there's only a few months to visit actually uh rainy my last name actually turns out to be a scottish name so um stinger asks what's my favorite historical town or city uh nara in japan i love all the deer there elvis says do i like ice cream what kind is it? i love ice cream if i just picked a basic flavor it's probably strawberry ice cream uh, Patrick wants to know if I have any idea when the borders are open for flights from Europe. Uh, no dates yet. Uh, sorry, uh, I don't know. Um, and it's it's not because it's been set and I don't know it, uh, but uh, it just hasn't been announced yet. Joe says, can I do a video on Palm Springs? I have one of the Palm Springs aerial tramway. Uh, if we visit again, I will. Uh, James wants to know if self-driving Ubers are popular. I've actually never seen a self-driving Uber. Lorraine uh, asked if I prefer Walmart or Costco. Costco, definitely. Uh, Samir was surprised about the tipping culture. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Sahil says, hey, Chris, uh, can I get a shout out to our new baby son, Ishan, born June 7th, already a Yellow Productions fan. Aw, Ishan, uh, hello to you. Hopefully you'll be watching this sometime in the future. Uh, and uh, your mom and dad will bookmark this to show it to you. And so I hope you are a Yellow Productions fan. Uh, Sahil, if you've not got a Yellow Productions onesie, I don't know what you're waiting for. Uh, they are our little explorer approved. She loves it. Um, Yoshi wants to know how I make the numbers I sometimes put up on the screen. You mean you mean like you mean like where where where'd my number button go? You mean like these numbers right here? These numbers? I just I have a I have a button on this that I put up these numbers and I flip through the numbers. Uh, it's a font called like film strip font that I use. That's how I make the numbers. Uh, Juan asks if I'm a Disney fan. I love Disneyland. Uh, Disneyland is a great place. Um, uh, Kirk asks if there's any word on the bullet train from LA to Vegas. I, yeah, like I guess it's still it's still a thing, and they're still planning to do it. Uh, I don't I don't know any more than that. Sir says, uh, "You ever been to Montana? I've never been to Montana." Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, Richard Spice wants to know how school holidays differ from around the world. I don't know. That's not something as a traveler it's easy to notice. So um, John wants to know if I'll have another Vegas live stream soon. Uh, John, when there's some good Vegas news to talk about, then yes. Uh, but right now, um, there hasn't been any – I mean, Vegas is open. Uh, it's been open for a few days, but it's like maybe shows come back or things like that, and there's some significant differences, then then we'll have an update. Maggie, uh, join in from Taiwan. Hi, Maggie from uh, Taiwan. Uh, Kay Clark wants to know when Disneyland in California will open. Any ideas? Uh, no ideas. Uh, Disney World in Florida is opening in July. So August, maybe, is a guess. Um Tony wants to know if buffets are open in Vegas. They are not. Um. <laughs> Elliot says, since we learned about catawampus last time, why is Topher being lackadaisical about our new vocabulary word? Ah, good question. I, you know, 
going to have to make sure Topher uses Catawampus in a lot more videos. Um, Emmett says, if you and OC Girl each want to visit separate locations, is there a special way you guys decide to break the tie? I think we we probably let Topher decide to break the tie. I don't know. We don't do like rock, paper, scissors or flip a coin or something like that. Um, Arn says, greetings from Norway. Uh, what's the best American-like store in Las Vegas? What's an American-like store? Uh, like a classic American store might be the ABC stores. It's like a convenience store that actually originated in Hawaii. I think it's pretty neat. Um, but there's a Target that's opening on the Las Vegas Strip uh, by like the M&M shop. So uh, when that opens up, then that's probably the most like Americanish store on the Las Vegas Strip. Um all right, so uh, it's time for the giveaway. Uh, I was give away something, and uh, so earlier I showed you guys a video of me playing Dance Dance Revolution, and uh, my question is, what arcade was I playing Dance Dance Revolution at? And by the way, while I wait for you guys to say what the name of the arcade is, uh, well, let's go ahead and watch it a little bit right here. And uh, this was actually the arcade manager uh, playing with me, which was pretty fun. Uh, and it was pretty fun uh, filming this with the Japanese TV crew. Uh, they were just really neat to work with. Uh, if you wonder how long I've been playing Dance's Revolution, probably since, uh, I don't know, the age of like 16 or 17, something like that. Uh, people often ask me, Chris, how do you stay so fit uh, eating uh, in and out burger so often, things like that. Uh, and uh, it's definitely from... Uh, a lot of exercise, so a lot of bicycle riding, uh, a lot of those things. All right, so uh, Lorraine, Lorraine LQ is the first one to get the right name of the arcade. It is round one indeed. Very good, uh, Lorraine. Uh, you win a Yellow Productions Crew t-shirt with the Yellow Productions Crew logo on it shipped to you anywhere in the world. Uh, send me an email to chris at yellow.net with two W's, Y-E-L-L-O-W-W dot net. Uh, or message me on Facebook. You'll find a link to my Facebook page in the description below. Let me know what size you want and where you want me to send it to. If you didn't get to win one, you can buy one on my Etsy shop. You'll find a link to that in the description of this video as well. By the way, if you are planning a visit to the United States of America, you might enjoy watching some of my other uh, USA series. My most popular is definitely Las Vegas. Uh, I've also got great series on Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego. You'll find a link to my California playlist in the description. Also, New York City is a super popular series that I have, but I've got videos from all over the USA. Uh, so uh, check those out after this if you want some more of a Yellow Productions fix. If I didn't get to your questions, I am sorry. Sometimes there are just too many. Uh, and Mr. Beluga won last time. Mr. Beluga, I never, like, unless you sent it just now, I haven't got it from you. So send an email again, because I didn't hear from you. You won last time. So send me another one. Chris at yellow.net. Make sure it has two W's in it. Uh, and with that, if this was your first time here, make sure you subscribe, click the bell, and turn notifications so you never miss another one of these live streams. As usual, I won't say goodbye, because I'll see you all in the next video.